Hey y'all, Jesse Peterson here with Let's Make Art. I'm a mixed media artist and I love art journaling and I have a really fun project for you today. I'm calling it, We Are All Connected. Oh. <laughs> so we've been working in a theme of impressions of home and this project um, ties in our home in a community kind of way. So first of all, thanks for being here and making time for art. We got Keenan here. Hello. He's our art cheerleader. Thank you for coming today. You're gonna do wonderful. <laughs> Um, and we're so glad that you're part of our community and I'm glad that we get to celebrate community today because it's really important to me. So first of all, let's take a deep breath just so we can like center ourselves and mindful art making the experience that we're going to have. I mean, doesn't it feel good? It's like, I never regret taking a deep breath. Like I only regret it when I'm in a pool. <laughs> Other than that, I, I'm usually doing just great. <laughs> that's, that's a true statement. I can, I can see that. Okay. So let's read our prompts. It's called Common Thread. Our sense of home can go beyond the structure of our house and be felt in our communities. Try journaling about the things in your community that you value most. Is there a common thread or shared belief that makes your community unique? What makes you feel connected? What are the things that you can do to contribute to the feeling of connection in your community? And this really made me think of a lot of different things, but visually I wanted to kind of show the connection in a fun way. And we've been practicing techniques where we're doing printmaking with objects. And so I thought it would be fun for us to print make with this pretty yarn. Ooh. And we could kind of do these loopy kind of um, imagery to kind of make it look like, you know, these connections that we're talking about here. Ah. So we're gonna do it on black paper, which is fun. I'll make it pop. Makes me feel suave when I use black paper. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, you know, it's just mixing it up a little bit and your values are different and like, you know, it's cool. Ah. So. While we're talking about black paper, let's talk about the supplies that we're going to need. So black paper is part of this project. We're going to print on the black paper and then we're going to um, glue that to our page for this one. Um, we are using the jelly plate and this is what it looks like. It is an eight by 10 jelly plate that we're going to use. I've been our, I've got one all, you know, warmed up and stained and awesome. So I'm going to use that one. I'll set this one aside. We are going to use a four inch brayer to get our paint all smooth and nice on there. We are going to use a three lengths of yarn. Now, if you don't have these exact supplies, you can look around your house and see what you got. Um, just something cool with texture is nice. I really like this one because it has these little bumps in it that make a nice impression. And I just like the variation of a thick and medium and thin one. So just keep that in mind if you're gathering up other supplies. We are going to use um, Dina Wakely acrylic paint in gilt, which is a metallic gold and aloe for the um, printing that we're doing here on the background. Um, I am going to ask you to grab a couple of sheets of your paper that you've been practicing on. So if you haven't been practicing and you don't have these sheets, then go see the practice videos um, or just roll some paint and have a good time. And so I'm gonna show you some of the scraps I have laying around. I've got this was literally just me cleaning my brayer on the paper, right? So no big deal, you can cool. have some of those. You can create some of those right now if you don't have any practice paper. This is one that we, we messed around with stenciling. This is one that we did um, a block color and then um, we had this extra paint on the, paper, on the printing gel plate. <laughs> and we put another pass of paint to pick it up and so we got this cool texture. This is another one where I was cleaning my brayer, another one where I was cleaning my brayer. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just gather those in a couple different colors and that's what we're going to use for the background of our house. And if you haven't created those, like I said, you can just use your brayer and get a couple go and make a couple of prints. Part of the fun of making collage paper is practicing and just exploring and seeing where you go. And then when you have that big stack of paper, then you can pick your favorites from there for that. We're going to use um, the collage paper that I designed. We're gonna cut out this car from this one. And you got two sheets of these papers. In the past, I only included one, but so many people asked for more than one copy. It was an easy thing to do. And then we're also going to use this sheet of collage paper and um, cut out. We are all connected, but you're free to make it yours, do whatever you like. That is just what I'm going to demonstrate today. So we got our collage paper, black paper, um, these awesome scissors. I'm really liking these. You can use these or a craft knife. We're going to use a Posca pen to draw the little details on the houses here and on this little bit of botanical there. Um, 
X-Acto, a pencil to sketch out the house before we put the Posca on there. We're going to glue all this down with Yes Paste. And so you may have a little container like this, or if you're looking to just really truly commit, we got this big tub of Yes Paste. It's great, lasts forever. It's water soluble. And I love that because it's not quick drying either. So it's really just a great workable glue for us. I'm going to use this handy dandy craft heat it tool to heat things up, keep them drying and moving along here. Okay, and then yeah, if you wanna have a ruler, cut straight edges, you're happy, feel free to do that or you can use a pair of scissors. I like having a clip nearby so I can keep my journal um, open if it's not seen so beautifully open like it is right now. And I think that's all of our supplies so we can get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is this background. So we're gonna get our gel plate out. I have mine in my little storage thing and I like putting mine right on this cutting mat because I think that makes it easier for me. And I've got my black paper nearby. And then I've got my blank journal that I'm going to use in it. I didn't mention it supplies, but there you go. We need our journal. Mentioned. It's mentioned. Check. Men check. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I just love this storage tin that I've been keeping this in. But you can also just keep it in a plastic clamshell that the product came in. But that storage tin has so much potential to decorate. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I got some Let's Make Art stickers that I want to put on mine. Ooh, bonus storage tin fact. <laughs> Not uh, as easy to, well, mm, uh, you know what, never mind, I rescind my comment. Oh, were you going to say? I was going to say the jelly plate is heat sensitive, like you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that storage tin, I feel like it would keep it cooler. Maybe. Till it gets know. left in a hot car. Oh, try not to leave it in a hot car. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Maybe, maybe don't do that. It won't make cool shapes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might get a little buckle or bubble in or something. <laughs> that, not great. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put aloe on our printing plate. And I'm going to be kind of liberal with my paint here because I don't want it to dry too fast because I really want to get those impressions. So a little more than some of the other ones I've been doing. And the gold, I find dries a little bit quicker than the other ones. So I'm going to use extra gilt is actually the name of this. And I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but I really like this paint because the viscosity of it, um, the thickness of it is thicker and that makes for a nice print for us. So I often use the um, Dilutions paint because it's one of my favorites, but it's thinner, which I love in our journaling because it dries faster, but it is not as great as this paint for print baking. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna use my brayer. It's got paint on it, but it's dry, so I'm good to go. And I'm going to um, start with my aloe. And you want to make sure that your roller is moving. So we want that to be happening. We don't want it sliding. That means you got too much paint. Just moving nice. Get us a thin layer here to work with. Then you can move into the gold. I love this effect. It's so fun. Yeah. I never get tired of it. So then you're going to move the gold back into the aloe to get that nice gradation of color, which I love. Mm, okay. What a good color combo. Now for this one, you're going to want to work fairly quickly. So let's do this. I am going to do my three lengths of yarn. I'm going to do the thicker guy first and I'm going to try to loop him on there. Okay, I'm just going to press it down to try to keep it in place. And I found the more I use my yarn, the it gets a little paint crusties on it, the better it works. Oh, that's cool. I do find that to be true. And you can twist it and turn it however you want. Just go with the flow here like that. And then our last little piece of yarn. Maybe I'll just make it do a little squiggle, squaggle. I don't think squaggle is a word. Swiggle, swaggle. <laughs> it's going to be on a new t-shirt soon. <laughs> and it's just going to say hashtag swiggle, swaggle. <laughs> uh, we're creating art. We're creating words. We're doing all kinds of things here. <laughs> okay. So like I said, we want to act fast. Let's make sure we got that. So we're going to grab a scrap paper. This is a two-step process. Two steps. Okay, we're going to put our 
just our regular copy paper and we are going to smash it and I'm gonna stand up for my chair because I can do this better so I'm gonna pull my chair back we're gonna smash it on there and this part is just gonna take all the paint in the negative space area of the yarn away and so we're gonna get like a silhouette image from that and it's cool too I love how this looks on the jelly plate too, though. What's that? Like when you press this, I love how it looks just like flattened on the jelly plate. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? So yeah, we like, get look at this that. Ooh. beauty right here. Now we're gonna carefully peel up our yarn. We're gonna try to get this next image really quickly because this dries so fast because the yarn kind of soaks it up. So you gotta work fast. And so if it doesn't work the first time, you guys, it's gonna be okay. That middle one's gonna be my favorite. I can feel it. So just pressing it really firmly. It almost feels like I'm massaging the paper into the plate. Yeah, that jelly plate's the most nicely treated uh, piece of art tool in the joint, you know? Yes. It's getting massaged daily. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right, moment of truth. Are you ready? Let's peel and reveal and knock my ruler off at the same time. Ooh. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's so fun. So cool. And it comes out different every time. And I love that about this project. That's Ugh. super cool. And we got this full page. So we can decide where we want to um, use it. See, I knew the middle one was going to be my favorite. I knew this it. guy. Yep. Oh yeah. Cause he has so much cool texture. Going so on. many cool textures. So cool. So I'm going to move over here and dry this a little bit. So it doesn't get something paint on something really fast. I love this one. You could use this one instead of the black one if you like it too. And if you wanna to continue to practice before you do the black, you can do that. You can experiment. I might've used a little less gold paint here and maybe um, I wouldn't have gotten more gold down there, but I kinda of think it's cool. So I'm gonna lean into that. I'm gonna be okay with that. Now in the past when I didn't use enough paint or I talked too long and it dried, I would get little skips in my um, image, but just practice going back and forth between more paint, less paint, working quickly, all of that will help you get that kind of imagery pretty easily. So I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm gonna think about what do we think is gonna be where we want it. I think I'm probably going to, I really like this, but I think it might be, a little distracting so I might just go right in there for my composition I think that's gonna be really cool we'll do something like that okay um, and we'll cut that out in a minute let me just clean up my plate really fast now you could put another layer of paint on here to try to pick up this leftover paint and do another paint um, do another print if you like but I'm just gonna clean this really fast and then put it aside and as I've been talking about in this whole video series, cleaning your jelly plate is pretty easy. You can use your baby wipe if you like. You can use a spray bottle. Sometimes that just a little extra water on here helps too. Mm. Um, you can use a paper towel, a wet paper towel. You can use gel hand sanitizer. Some people have said they like using that. Um, or you can take it to the sink and just wash it with soap and water. It's easier for me to do it this way on set, but I think this is looking pretty good. Always fun to make these squeaky sounds. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use an extra piece of paper to sort of dry that off and see we got everything off there. Looking pretty good. And I'll reuse that paper again some other time. Okay, let's put this guy away for now. I just like putting it away right away and keeping it flat because that's going to lengthen its lifetime, it's, uh, life span is what I was trying to say. I'm going to dry this off because we're going to do other things with the cutting board now. Make sure there's nothing on there. Oh, 
Okay, so let's cut our car out. And I might demo the exacto and the scissors for this. So yeah, you can get in here. I'm gonna grab my chair again so I can steady myself here. Um, you can get in sort of close and cut with an exacto. Like this. Or you can use your scissors and I'll just do a little bit of both for this. Now when I'm cutting, I have to make decisions. Like there's this little pipe sticking out the back of this car. That is not going to add to the aesthetic of my journal and it is not worth me trimming out. So I'm just gonna cut that guy right off. I'm okay with that. Remember you can turn your paper to what feels comfortable so you don't have to get in a weird angle. You can tell the paper what to do. You don't have to be uncomfortable. Same thing with this. This has like a little fender or something on the front. I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to cut that right off. But I do want to keep my license plate. Mm. I think it's cool. So I'm it is cool. That. Do we know what kind of car that is? I have no idea. Huh. I'd love to know. If somebody else recognizes it. Tell us in the comments. Oh, yeah. If you're viewing this on YouTube. Otherwise, there's other places to communicate that to us. We need to know either way. <laughs> okay. So most of my videos, I have showed you guys how to cut with an X-Acto, and that proves to be pretty great. But I'm also just loving these scissors. And anytime I can make something easier for you, I do that. So I'm going to get in here and cut close with this. And the nice thing about these scissors is that you can still get a really close trim as you turn your paper and your scissors to work together. So I just want to demo that so you guys could have another choice. Just try to keep it within the spot you need to look at it at. <laughs> it's, it's hard to do. It is. I mean, you got to be able to see things, small things to cut out, you know. And we did a little bit of both, so you could use that as some kind of masking if you wanted to, that oh. little cutout paper. Yeah, looking good. Like how my car turned out. Okay. And then we're going to need, we're all connected. So go ahead and cut that out. And that one's on the sheet of paper where our friend is ironing. Mm -hmm. and it's right here on the bottom if you're looking for it and I dropped my ruler earlier so I'm going to grab that <laughs> okay ruler Cut that. you can use a ruler or a straight edge or not it's no big deal I often just freehand the short sides because it's easier for me. Okay. We got that. Okay, now for the fun part. Yes. Well, one of the fun parts is cutting our little house shapes. Now, in the other tutorials, I gave you a house shape. If you like that shape and you want to do that again or something similar, you can do that. But I thought these were kind of fun. And I thought everybody could just draw a little simple house shape if they're feeling that. So let's go through my paper here. I've got some that I, like I said, I just clean my brayer with, but then I've got this guy that we practice with stencil. Oh, I love that one. This one here? The one before, I'm sorry, I was delayed. Oh, that's okay. And I think this one might be nice for that pink house. Mm. And then, yeah, I think I just want a gold one. Maybe I'll use that. Or I could use this. We got choices. All right. So I'm just going to put this here so I get an idea of size of how I drew it last time, but it's about that big. I'm just going to go. Oh, no, I wanted to do the pink 
holding my finger here. <laughs> Do not move. Ooh, count the squares. Oh, I could have, but I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> I'm gonna do it right in here. I think we'll be cool. Yeah, you could count the squares. You could do that. Where's my pencil? I started out organized. Here we go. So let's get this guy back over here. Something like right there. This turns out different every time and I'm okay with that because I think it looks cool. Either way. I think that looks cool. I'll just take your scissors and trim it out. Now it could have been cool if I did a little bit more of the grungy texture in there. You could do choose to do that. Or if I would have gotten more of that aloe at the top, that could have been cool. Ooh. But I am looking for something that's gonna contrast with my Posca pin so the little details of the house will show up. So just keep that in mind. Okay, well there's one house. And I think I want this one to be a little more squattier than that one, so I'm gonna use this as a reference. So when I put them next to each other, this guy, this other guy will be shorter. So let's see, it's gonna be like that. I'm using a pencil, so you don't like it, it's something you drew, you can always erase it. You don't gotta be precious, we're just having a good time. I don't want it to be that tall, I want it to be shorter than that, so right there, it's gonna be good. A little bit wider than that. Yeah, I'm liking that shape. And you can go back and erase the lines from your pencil so they don't show up if you don't like that. Or you can leave them, it's up to you. I like those neighborhoods that have all the different kinds of houses. Yeah. Not in the same style. Me too. There's some cool neighborhoods around here that have houses that are over a hundred years old, it seems like, right next to, you know, a newer house. But they all seem to fit nicely together. They do. Okay, so we got those two houses, and now I want this funky one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of roof that, I don't, I don't know that much about architecture, but I just like that. That looks like a, ho a house that would have a widow peak. Is that what that's called? I think so. I think I want to do it in here because I still want some contrast. So I'm going to draw it like this. And I want it to probably be a similar height to this guy. Maybe it could come out a little bit. this guy out. So that's called a widow's peak, you said? How do you know that? I, th I think it's called a widow's peak. Because there's a house like that in the city I grew up in, the village that I grew up in. <laughs> the village. You know, population 271. Mm -hmm. But I always wanted to know what it was called. My mom told me it was called a widow's peak. 
Let me see if it's it's wrong. <laughs> see if your mom's wrong. I bet your mom knew what she's I'm, talking about. Well, I might be calling it the wrong thing because I know there's something. Let me see. Let me let me let me Google. I'll give you some info on it. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to just have fun with my Posca pen, making little designs on my house here. I'm going to flip it over so they can see better what I'm doing. So I'm just hitting the edge first, a little white outline. Okay, I found it. The Widow Peak? Mm-hmm. Is that what it's called? So it is called Widow's Peak. That's also a hair style. So really? that was why I was confused initially. Uh, it's when someone has that point on their forehead. Oh, like this? Mm-hmm. Hmm. But the reason this is called, uh, the question that, w that was asked is, why is it called the Widow's Peak House? Upon the, roofs of, upon the roofs of many of these 19th century homes is a rectangular platform bound by a low fence, a widow's walk. These viewing platforms were said to have been used by the wives of mariners who anxiously awaited their husband's return to port. Oh, cool. Yeah. So this one is a little more, a little higher on the roof than um, traditional, but there are a couple houses that are very similar to how you drew it. So I think that's pretty neat. I think I just want this one to have a bunch of stripes across it like I did before. Seems fitting. Still want to have an outline now, so I'm going to do that. I do find that the Posca pen takes a little few more seconds to dry when you're painting, doing it on something that's painted because it's a slicker surface so it can't like absorb as easily, but it will dry because Posca pens work on lots of different surfaces. Mm. Just be mindful of that when you're sticking your big finger in it because I did that just now. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you have cute little dainty fingers. I don't know, but either way, just be aware. On some cute windows. I think I had fun like decorating these houses. I made a whole bunch of them when I first started playing around with this idea. <laughs> oh, I like the houses you chose. I like those houses with the long windows. Yeah, those are fun. And it's okay. They don't want to be perfect. The wonky part of it is what makes it fun. And unique. Mm -hmm. The wonky part in my house is from the age. Oh, yeah. How old is your house? My house is said to have been built in 1896-ish. Oh. Which is like the Wild West. Do you know any about, anything about the people who live there? Nothing. It, I, it doesn't look like a cool Wild West movie uh, style house, though. You know, like, it's just a square. <laughs> it's got a porch. It's got character. Yeah, yeah, sure. My brother has an old house in Louisiana that has, um, they, like, left a picture of the original family oh. that built it. So he has that picture hanging up of the family. They owned a little department store down, downtown from where he lived. I, don't know, I think it's kind of cool to know the history of your house and a little something about the people who live there. Oh, yeah. The history would be cool to know.
pretty cool. Now this one I did sort of this roundish windows. Try that. There's square at the bottom, but oval at the top, whatever that's called. Hmm. We're going to call it a gutter skirt. Now you're just making stuff up. Yeah, 100%. The darker colors show up more with the Posca white pen, um, but I kind of like this little subtleness of this. I'm okay with that. And we, you could also use a black Posca pen. If you don't have one of those, that's just a nice thing to have around. These Posca pens are great. I just love them. So I guess you could have done black instead of white. <laughs> that would have been cool. Yep. Oh, I got a little crazy out there. It's all right. Okay, I'm feeling good about my houses. Look at that trio. Hmm. I like it. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I've got to draw my little botanical too. I'm gonna move those up. Let's see here. I was gonna freehand this. No, I'm not. I'm gonna use a pencil. <laughs> Change of plans. I got scared. Okay, sometimes I would get, nope, it's not showing up. Just go with it. You guys, don't get scared. <laughs> don't be like me. You can do it. It's okay to be scared, but power through. I think that I can draw this better in this direction. Yep. One, two, three. Would you mind pushing that up a little higher? I would love to do that. Thank you. Yeah, something like that. And when I cut it out, I'm gonna make it a little skinnier because I wanted it to be skinnier <laughs> than how I drew it. Good reason. I'm just going to trim it out and then cut out the cute parts. Okay, here we go. You know, I've been pretty much a diehard craft knife kind of girl, but these kind of things like this are actually easier to cut with scissors I think yeah you've been uh, you've been a big fan of the craft knife for a while yeah but you know if something that I'm doing doesn't work for you you can always try other things and I just thought hey you know people are people are using scissors out there what am I missing out on I gotta yeah, what are just... these these people are onto something but I think it's because the scissors that I used in the past had a longer this way whatever that thing's called Hey. And I couldn't oh. get around the corners as easily. The actual blades? Yeah. So these are shorter blades. You can get into tight spaces better with these, I feel like. Okay. And they are quality, quality scissors. They're sharp. Made easy work of that. Okay, so now we got all of our friends trimmed and ready to go. We can get our paper on there it's just this one goes fast yeah okay where's my journal oh and my black paper that i printed it's hiding <laughs> it was really hiding it was way over here got it all right it's so cool you made that we made this um, just, you know, checking in with myself. This is the front of my journal. Sometimes I paste things upside down. So just here for you to remind you, this is the front. This is the, <laughs> sometimes I do that. That's called looking out for the, for the every man. Yeah. Right just, there. just here to help. It's really okay if you do it upside down. It's not a big deal, but. 
I am going to, I'm liking this placement right in there. So I'm gonna do a little bit of, a little bit of that. I'll probably still cut this with a ruler, but I just want this extra paper out of my way for now. So I can see what I'm doing. Okay, liking that. Okay, so now let's trim this a little straighter. I'm gonna just line my paper up that way. And get a straight edge for the inside of that. So when I glue this down, I like to just come away from this part of the paper so that my book doesn't catch on it when it folds. So just a little inside is nice so that it doesn't catch. Because if you put it right in there, Sometimes opening, closing, it might pull it up. So just pro tip, glue it a little bit inside. No one's gonna notice. And I'm gonna glue this whole thing down now and then I'm gonna trim out the rest. That helps me get that paper placement right on. So your palette knife, with your glue ready to go. And this is how it's gonna go on. I'm not gonna need to put any glue past this area, so I'm gonna avoid that because I'm gonna wanna use the rest of that paper for something else. Let's get our glue going. And just, you know, a thin layer is all we need. And I have sang the praises of Yes Paste before, but if you're new here, tell you why I like it is because it is not fast drying. Most people want a fast drying glue unless you're doing collage. And then you want some, you want some room for error there to be able to move it around and get the placement just right, which I like. And it's water soluble, so if you get it all over your cutting mat like I'm about to do, you can just wash it off, it's no big deal. No big deal. I don't know how well this is showing up on. Oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah, it looks great. Shiny, you can see where I'm putting glue down. I think I've discovered, not necessarily the model, but the year that our vehicle is from. Really? Years. Your vehicle or your house? Your vehicle. My for vehicle. Your, for your project. Oh, I was like, what are we Sorry. talking about, Keenan? Sorry to confuse you, but I was very curious. I was trying to figure it out. So I think it's from the 1940s. And it's vintage. And it's vintage. And I think it's a Studebaker. Really? Yeah. Very cool. So what I mean about this workable glue is, like, I just thought just now, like, I just want the edge of that to be even with the edge of my book. So I'm just going to peel that up and place it back down again so I can get it with the edge, so then I only have to trim out the top and the side if I can get it on there straight, if I could do that. There we go. And I still got room for my book to fold. Feeling good about that. I got a little glue on there. That's not a big deal. You can just use a little baby wipe to get that off. While I'm at it, I'll get the glue off my fingers. <laughs> All right. That's feeling like it's on there nice. Now we can trim the other side. Nice. So I just like to put it face down. Get my Exacto. Put it right next to the page. Trim it out. And we can save this a little bit for something cool. I mean, that looks cool. I like that That texture. does look cool. I like that a lot. Like 
cut. Oh, didn't quite get it. And then just around our corners. Nice black background. I love it. Okay, let's figure out our house placement here. Well, stuck my finger right in that. Yes, paste. <laughs> <laughs> let's close that up. Well, we're not done with that. I'm not closing it up yet. So I just like to get my things sort of placed on there, get an idea of what I'm doing here. And then, so, if I want to use that botanical the same way I did last time, I'm going to need to drop my houses and my car down. And I kind of don't want to miss out on this cute little curly. Yeah, that texture is too good. There. Maybe I'll swap the order of my houses so that we can see that more. Yeah, I kind of like that better. And you can scooch up your houses however you like. Maybe this guy will be in the middle. Yeah, something like that. And then that can be right there. And then we can put, we could put We Are Connected down there and move this up so we get that road or we could put we are connected still over here you don't have to do it exactly like me because chances are your squiggly yarn is going to be somewhat different than mine as well i'm feeling pretty good about that because i kind of like that this looks like a road that the car is on so i'm going to move that and you kind of use that as a guide for my house so i'm going to stick this house down first I'm trying to not do that on my page though. So if I get extra glue, it's not going to be on my page. Let's do it on our work surface. I'm just going to put it that down lightly so I still have an opportunity to change my mind if I want. like that. When I think about community, I think about some of the opportunities I've had to serve in my community and how good that feels. And I've definitely had people serve me as well when things have been not ideal. And it's nice to feel like you're a part of community and that you're not all on your own when tough things happen. It sure is nice to have a sense of community when you're moving into a house, I'll tell you that. We had a lot of new friends come and meet us to help us move in when we moved to Missouri. It's nice to have that kind of community, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so community can mean a lot of different things as you're thinking about this journaling prompt, a lot of different things. Could be a group of people waiting at the DMV, you know? Same wait line, you've created a community. <laughs> could be there for hours, could be there for days, who knows? Who knows, might as well make some friends. Might as well. <laughs> I just don't want to cover up that, so I think I'm a, I'd rather cover up my house a little so I can get that a little curly. It's too in good, there. you know, that's too good. Came out so nice. Okay, I'm committing to the house placement now. There it is. Whoop, just put my car right in the glue. It's all right. Get our car going. We got 1940s Studebaker question mark. Is that what you got? Yeah.
Well, I just think it's cool. I don't know what kind of car it is. It is cool. I agree. It's a cool car. I put it on that yarn road. I like how yes pace slowly but surely makes you run out of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you start using like your ring fingers just to spread It's paper. like that one's stinky, stink, <laughs> sticky. <laughs> Not sticky, sticky, that one is. So now I have this one left that's not sticky. Yeah. Or you could just clean your hands and then you would have all of your digits. Nope. <laughs> that's half the fun. The right. Half the challenge. challenge of being super sticky. It's all right. <laughs> Whoops. Bent it. It's going to be fine, though. Whoop. I don't like that that's touching that, so yay mm. for yes pace. Moving it up. There we go. That's better. Oh, that's nice. Gotta find a spot on here that doesn't have glue on it. There we go. <laughs> See, well. I can put it there. We can still put it there. I kind of want this to overlap the corners, the yarn. I think that's cool. So we changed it up. And this one, we put it there kind of across that, and I was liking that. And it's very similar still. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, I just got to trim off the top of that little botanical real fast. that with my scissors just a little snip and we did it y'all we made this <laughs> ooh, ooh. um i just i love the idea of thinking about home in the in a sense of community and i love that we have this community community of our journalers like painting and drawing and working together and sharing ideas and cheering each other on um so grateful for this community that I get to be in with you. Um, if you want to share what you made, we love to see what you made. So you can try sharing it at our um, Facebook group, Let's Make Art Journals, or you can share it on Instagram, which is hashtag Let's Make Art Journals there. Um, thanks so much for taking the time to create with us. We'll see you next time.